Turn with me, please, to Romans, the third chapter, and verse 3. We've been on the subject for some uh, weeks now. We're calling real faith, real faith. And our texts are here. He says, Romans 3, 3, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? What's the answer to that? Well, verse 4 gives you the answer. God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it's written, that you may be justified in your sayings and might overcome when you're judged. Back up to verse 3 again. We, we went into some detail in previous messages about how that some have became disillusioned with faith. Some years ago, even 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago and more, there are a number of people who are very excited about faith. And they begin to uh, make confessions and begin to pray the prayer of agreement and other things. But as time has gone by, a number of them have become disillusioned because things they said didn't come to pass and things they prayed didn't happen. And so whether they just came right out and said it or not, uh, they've come to the belief that that doesn't work. And so they're looking for and embracing other messages now. Well, really, no matter how you frame it, the only other message there is, is that it's all up to God. <laughs> and that's, it may sound like a new message, but it's an old message. It's been around for centuries. Either it's according to our faith, and we have responsibility to believe, or it's up to God, and everything's up to God. And you'll find that among many that say they believe in God, you never hear anything about the devil. And all you hear about is what they call the sovereignty of God. And that sounds like they're showing respect and believe in God's ability, but it's, it's a deception. Because if you never talk about the enemy, and, all you, and you say God's in control of everything, and everything he, he's doing or, or allowing to happen, and there's some reason and some part of his will, then you're going to wind up blaming God for every evil thing. And that's not going to make you want to be close to him. Phyllis and I had some friends we went to, went to high school with. And uh, uh, he, uh, a man and a woman, and they got married young, like we did. And uh, his little brother was killed in a terrible accident, young, just, just a young kid. And uh, some, well, you know, ministers came by to see him. And one of them was trying to convince him that, that God took his brother because of he, it was a plan that nobody understood, but that God needed him in heaven more than he needed him down here. And man, such a look came over this young man. I'm talking about our friend. And he said, well, if that's God, you'll never see me in church again. And if he's ever gone, if he's ever gone back, I don't know. it. I know for years he didn't. I just hadn't been around him. But see, he believed a lie. I said he believed a lie. God's not the killer. Jesus said, John 10, 10, put it on the screen, please. John 10, 10. Anybody believe the Bible? John 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief comes not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Is God the thief? Is Jesus the thief? Well, who's he talking about? There's a devil. If you believe the Bible, you have to believe it. There's a devil. He's a killer. He's cruel. Cruel. 
But Jesus said, but I am come. Why did you come, Lord? Not to take people in the prime of their life. How many believe that God is not killing people in tornadoes or earthquakes or tsunamis or car wrecks? You know, he has a lot of ability. He could get you out of here some other way than smashing cars together. Now, I know that bothers some folks. They say, well, God's controlling everything. Well, it's just not true. Read the Bible. <laughs> he said, I set before you life or death, blessing or cursing, you choose. Didn't he say that? Well, if, if he's making all the decisions, there is no you choose. If he's controlling everything, there is no if. No. He's left a lot of it up to us. And what we believe or don't believe affects what happens in our life. No, there's a devil. There's a thief. He's a killer. He's a destroyer. And it's happening all over the planet. But there's a good God. Oh, somebody say a good God. He's a good God. He'll do good things for you. He'll help you. He's not your problem, never has been, never stole anything from you, never destroyed anything in your life. He's not your problem. He's your answer. Jesus said, I am come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. The Amplified says, I am come that you may have life, have and enjoy life. And have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. That's some of that ability we were talking about earlier. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, that's not in my notes, but I think somebody needed that. What, what do you think? Romans 3, 3. What if some did not believe? Does that, shall the faith of God be without effect? Some have prayed and, and their, their prayers weren't answered like they wanted them to be. Some have said things and tried to decree faith and it didn't happen. And so they decided it doesn't work. But just because they didn't believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God? Does it mean that God's faith in God doesn't work? God forbid. God forbid. 1 Timothy 1. 1 Timothy 1 and 4 said, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do. Now the end of the commandment is love out of a pure heart and a good conscience and a faith unfeigned. Amen. Everybody say faith, faith. Unfeigned. unfeigned. Now we don't use that word all that much in modern vernacular, feign. But feign means to pretend. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unfeigned would mean not pretend. Right. Right. If he's talking about faith that is not pretend, what does that let you know? Really. There is faith that does. that's pretend. Yeah. Right. Other translations bring out, he said, a faith which is not assumed but real. One says, not a counterfeit faith. Others say, true faith, genuine faith, faith in God that's real. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's where we got our, our title for the series for. Amen. Well, some have said, well, you know, you know they, what they were calling faith in speaking and believing and, and praying didn't work. And they're right. What they were calling faith doesn't work because it's not real faith. And that's not trying to judge anybody. If you've gone any distance walking with the Lord, you've done some foolish stuff. I've already told you some things Phyllis and I have done. Right? May tell you some more. <laughs> but the big thing is you don't quit. And you have some sense and you don't blame God. Isn't it something when things go wrong 
that the only thing a lot of people think of is, God let me down. You mean that's the only possible reason why something didn't work right? It has to be on God's end. Never occurred to them, maybe I didn't do something right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Have some humility. God doesn't miss it. <laughs> we know somebody that has, right? But not God. Not God. <laughs> Are you okay? Yes, sir. So anyway, we have talked about what's not real faith and what is real faith. And we, first of all, we looked at imitation faith. Yes. And there's a message on that. If you, if you weren't here, you can get it. It won't cost you anything. Go online, download it, or back in the back at the Word Supply, they'll give you a, a disc or a CD or whatever. It won't cost you anything. How many think that it'd be worth people's time to go and, and get caught up on this? We talked about imitation faith. Then we talked about presumptuous faith. Then we talked about baseless faith. Faith with no foundation. And now, uh, last week we talked about faith you can see. <laughs> Real faith can be seen. <laughs> The Bible said, you know, the four that brought the paralyzed men, it said when they tore off the roof, Jesus saw their faith. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Real faith can be seen. It's seen in what you do. It's seen in your actions. Let's go on further today. Can you take some more? You got time? How big a rush you're in? How many think when we come before the Lord, we ought not be in too big of a rush? Don't get scared. <laughs> Luke 17, would you go there please? Luke 17 and verse 6. The Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, they were singing about it today, weren't they? You might say, well actually the word might is not, the, the literal talks about you would have said. Young's literal, author of the concordance, he said it this way, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, what would have happened? You would have said to the sick of mine, be uprooted, planted in the sea, and it would have obeyed you. It would have obeyed God? No. It would have obeyed you. Why? Because you would have said. Why? Why? Because you had faith. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> Don't let it be too simple for you. <laughs> it would have obeyed you. Now we're talking about something in this physical realm. Now people mock this. They make fun of this. You actually believe you could talk to something and it changed. What are you? What are you, a magician? What are you? They're mocking Jesus. I didn't say this. I didn't write this. Jesus said, if you had faith, even a little bit, even a tiny bit, you would have done what? You would have said something. <laughs> well, real faith can be seen. Guess what else? Real faith can, oh, you're quick, you're... <laughs> can be heard. Yes, it can. Real faith can be heard. When it comes to being seen, James says, show me my faith without you doing anything. I'll show you my faith by what I do. Well, they, they, they can't show you faith without doing anything. It's dead faith. It's not real living faith. The faith's not there if, if there's no action. Well, likewise here. If you don't hear anything, then the faith's not there. That's right. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 
that we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. His faith was heard. Hallelujah. Space heard it. The earth heard it. The deep heard it. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Faith, real faith, can be heard. And Jesus said, if you had faith, even a little bit, what would have happened? You would have said something. You would have said something. And it would have obeyed you. <laughs> I, it sounds too good to be true. It sounds too amazing uh, to be real to the carnal mind. But I'm reading the Bible. I, I'm quoting Jesus. I know some years ago I was reading and it, it told the story of Jesus uh, ministering to Peter's mother-in-law. And said she had a great fever. Apparently she was delirious in a bad, bad way. And it said that they asked him, Jesus, to minister to her. And he, uh, he came in to the room. And the Bible said he rebuked the fever. And I had read right over that before. And I stopped. I thought, hold on, hold on. Jesus is not praying. He's not t- talking to the father. He's not talking to Peter's mother-in-law. He's talking to a fever. Is that right? He's talking to a fever. And I paused. I thought, can a fever hear? I read the rest of it. It said, and it left her. I thought, yep. Yep. Fevers can hear. If fevers can hear... Cancer can hear. Kidneys can hear. Hearts can hear. Lungs can hear. Kidneys. Liver. Glands. Knees. Feet and hips can hear. But what are they what what are they hearing out of you? Huh? What's your, what's your glands? When's the last time they heard out of you? Your organs. Your bones. Your joints. Hmm? Even many church going people, the only thing their joints will ever hear is, is my bad knee. My tennis elbow. My weak eye. Well, what you say is your faith speaking. Or what you say is your fear speaking. And Jesus said, if you believe it and don't doubt, you'll have what you said. Didn't he? Mark 11, put it on the screen for us. Mark 11, 23. Anybody know Mark 11? 23? What does it say? Verse 22 said, have faith in God. So he's talking, how many believe he's talking about real faith? Yes. Jesus didn't talk about any other kind. Real faith, not the phony stuff. Verse 23, he said, For verily I say to you that whosoever shall what? Say. Shall what? Say, say something. Say something yeah. To the mountain. Now that's not prayer. No, that's right. That's right. This is not begging God to move the mountain. He didn't tell us to beg him to move the mountain. He didn't tell us to beg him and plead with him to make the mountain go away. Yet how many how many believers are doing that? Nonstop. Without results. What did he say? Say to the mountain, be removed. Who's he talking to? Not God. Be removed and be cast into the sea. And if you don't doubt in your heart, but believe what? The things that you said will come to pass. Jesus said, he shall have whatever 
He said, he'll have what? Not, not, he didn't say he'll have whatever he needs. Didn't say he'll have whatever he needs. Didn't say he'll have whatever he wants. Didn't say he'll have whatever God wants him to have. Now see, religion ha has ignored this and put those other things in there. Right. Subtle, but dangerous. You need to stay with what the master said. If he'd have wanted to say it a different way, I reckon he could have. If he'd have wanted to emphasize something else, he would have. This is what he emphasized. What? Talk to it. Tell it what you want it to do. Somebody say talk to it. Talk to it. Tell it what you want it to do. Now it didn't just say it'll happen because you told it what you want it to do. You got what? You got to believe it. You got to believe that those things that you said. So it's more than just talking. Believe those things that you say will come to pass. Jesus said. People mock it. They make fun of it. They call us blab it and grab it. They call us confess it and pos uh, possess it. They're making fun of this. They're making fun of Jesus and what he said. He said he will have whatever he says. Tell your neighbor, help them out. Say, you will have whatever you say. Now add this to it, if you believe it. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus said, if you had faith, even a little bit, you would have done what? You'd have said something. And it would have happened. That's how he operated when he walked the earth. That's how God has always functioned. And you and I are made in the image and likeness of God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus is not ashamed to call us brethren. <laughs> we're not just friends, we're kin. <laughs> we're not just servants, we're family. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> kin to who? Kin to God. I'm kin to Jesus. I'm joint heirs with him. You can't be an heir unless you're in the will. <laughs> I'm in the New Testament and will. Man, I'd have come preach this just to myself <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Go to 2 Corinthians, please. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13. It says, We having the same spirit of faith, talking about as the patriarchs, talking about as the men and women of faith you read about in the Old Testament. We have the what? Same spirit of faith according as it is written. This is a quote from Scripture. I believed. What else? Therefore have I spoken that's a quote from Scripture. Then he, said, he, he applies it personally. We also believe. And therefore, we speak. If you believe, you'll speak. No speaky, no believing. <laughs> 
Somebody needed to laugh. <laughs> Is it true or not? I mean, <laughs> we've got the same spirit of faith as Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, same spirit of faith as David. Elisha. Elijah. Isaiah. Is that right? There's not a different spirit of God and there's not a different faith in God. There's not a different God. One God. Same spirit. Same faith. We're functioning in a measure of the same faith they operated in. And they got it from him. It's a measure of the same faith he operates in. And with his faith, he creates galaxies. <laughs> wow. How'd he do it? Genesis, it's all right there. He said. Didn't he say? And if you look at it in the literal instead of other translations, basically it keeps saying, he said, this be. Light. B. Whew. And that's how it came into being. This B. That B. That B. And according to the Genesis account, everything you see down here came into being because he spoke it out. He hasn't changed. He never will change. This is what works. And this is what Jesus did as he walked the earth, showing us how to do it as a man. Yes. What are you saying? Yes. Brother Hagen, my father in the faith, well known for teaching and preaching on Mark 11, 23 and 24. Hmm? Did you know it or not? He said this, he said this many times. He said, what you say is your faith speaking. Right. That's right. That's right. He usually said it in connection with Mark 5, the woman with the issue of blood. He said, what you say is your faith speaking. Now I'm quoting him verbatim now. He said, I've preached it for 50 years. And that was when he was in his, his uh, that was in the early 80s, not his 80s, 1980s. I've preached it for 50 years and I'm going to keep on saying it. Yeah. And if the Lord tarries and I'm still here 50 years from now, I'll still be preaching it. Yeah. If you're not satisfied with what you have, then quit saying what you're saying. If you're not satisfied with what you have, then quit saying what you're saying. He said, you blame it on other people, but you've created it yourself. That's right. That's right. See, it's, notice, the, notice the phraseology of the world that's popular, that's supposed to be cool. Everything that, that's really neat is not neat, it's sick. That's sick. Why ain't it healthy? <laughs> huh? Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Why ain't it good? That's good. Hmm? That's right. That's right. Dope. Scared me to death. Why didn't it scare you to life? <laughs> Laughed till I thought I'd die. Why isn't it laugh till I, I thought I'd rejoice? Thought I'd get raptured. <laughs> huh? You're never going to hear that because the God of this world is not pushing that. He, he does not want that in your mouth. Now you hear people say, oh, don't bug me about 
you know, I, you know what I meant, you know. No, no. the enemy is legalistic. Yes, he is. He's looking for access to you and to your life. And he knows the quickest and most effective way to get access to you to steal, kill, and destroy is to put stuff in your mouth. Amen. Bring it to your mind, bring it to your ears, and get you to say it. You'll be tempted. I don't care how long you walk with the Lord. You'll be tempted to say bad stuff yeah, about yourself. Yeah. I guess I'm just getting old, you know, getting a little slow. <laughs> yeah. Ain't funny. Right. How slow do you want to get? Yeah. When's the last time you heard somebody say, I'm getting older, getting quicker, yeah. getting sharper. Yeah. That just, that just sounds foreign. Right. But you have what you say. You have what you say. I guess I'll be the first one laid off. Ain't that how it goes? Get something paid off and it breaks. If you say so. And then people, people act like they're a prophet when it came to pass. See, I told you. <laughs> Yeah, dummy, because you decreed it. (laughs) Because people don't believe this. They don't believe Proverbs that says you'll eat good by the fruit of your mouth and that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Many scriptures like this all through the Bible. But the enemy has convinced most people, including church-going people, that it don't matter what you say. And there's not a short uh, short distance from that to it don't matter what you pray. It don't matter what you do. You know, God's in control anyway. And you just never know what God's going to do. Well, if you said that about me, that wouldn't be a compliment. Did Brother Keith say he was going to come? Yeah, he did. But you just never know <laughs> what Brother Keith's going to do. <laughs> You're saying my words are no good. Right? right? I told you I'm coming, but don't count on it because you just never know. That's a bad thing to say about a God who's never lied and never let you down and never failed you. Yeah, we know what he's going to do. He's going to do what he said he would do. Every time. And I want you to notice what he said he would do. Where, where are you? There, there's more there, but for time's sake, <clears throat> let's do this. Just, just you go to... Uh, Hebrews 3, and on the screen, please put up Isaiah 57, 19. You're going to Hebrews 3. <coughs> They'll put up on the screen Isaiah 57, 19. That scripture said, we just got through looking at, we got the same spirit of faith. Another translation said, I spoke because I had faith. We have that same kind of faith, so we speak. One translation says, I believed it, so I said it. I believed it, so so I said it. I spoke because I believed. If it's strong enough in your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth mouth speaks. If If you don't say it, if you don't believe it enough to say it, you don't believe it enough. But when it gets strong enough in you, you'll say it sometimes without thinking. That's true. That's true. Right? When it gets strong enough in you. Hallelujah. I know uh, Phyllis and I were just months into learning about faith and walking with God. This would have been back in the 70s, young and young in the Lord, 
just knew a handful of verses, just learned them. And my uncle on uh, my mom's side of the family had uh, been diagnosed with cancer of the lungs. And uh, he got worse and worse till he couldn't work and he's almost bed fast and just dwindled down to nothing. And the doctors said it was terminal. And uh, we had just learned some things about faith. And so we wanted to get some of these, uh, they didn't have CDs back then, tapes to it. And so cassettes and books, that kind of thing. So we, uh, they were a little bit distance from us and we drove down and, and talked to him some. And I believe it was a, a second time that we went. And man, he's, he's virtually bedfast, just down to nothing, skin and bones. And we're talking to him about believing God, about having faith. And so uh, after talking to him, we went back into the kitchen with some of the other family. And we looked up in a minute, and he was standing in the doorway, holding on to the door facing. He said in a weak voice, he said, I'm going to live. I'm going to live. Well, some of the family almost made them upset. They thought, you know, he's, he's so far gone, may not know what he's saying and doing. And they thanked us for trying to console him, but we weren't trying to console him. I believed, therefore I spoke. We got word back in a few days, he was doing better. Then he was doing better. Then he could eat. Then he got up. Then he went back to work. Hallelujah. And lived for some time after that. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, hallelujah. Uh, yeah, he came in that doorway and hung there weak. He said, I'm going to live. Some folks wanted to cry. I wanted to shout. <laughs> and he did. Amen. Oh, somebody say, I believe. I believe. So I said it. So Why did he say that? Why did he come in there? Say that because something had taken root and hold in his spirit. Oh, hallelujah. And it moved him enough. He wanted to get up in his weakened condition and come in there and hang on to the door facing him and say, I just want y'all to know I will live. I'm going to live. And he did. Cain completely out. Comple I mean from death's door. Completely out. Oh, we celebrate and shouted. Thank God as we heard the news. Well, only a couple of years after that, uncle on the other side of the family, on my dad's side of the family, lung cancer, same thing. So we thought, hey, we've been here before. Right? <coughs> we live closer to them. So we went over and talked to him more than once and brought some materials. And he seemed agreeable and got worse and worse and died. Now, see, a lot of folks at that juncture, what would they do? Well, <laughs> you just never know. Huh? And you know, it must not have been God's will. Oh, really? So everything that happens is God's will. There's a lot of bad stuff happening. You sure you want to put all that on God? That includes people dying without Him. How many of the Bible said it is not His will that any should perish? Are people perishing? Yes, they are then things are happening that's not his will. Amen. He said, pray thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If it's already being done, you wouldn't need to pray that it would be. Right. 
There's all kind of stuff happening down here that is not the will of God. But I was puzzled. I thought, Lord, what happened here? Well, we went to the funeral home. And the family was there. And there were some people standing right beside me. I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, but they were talking loud enough other people could hear it. And it was a child of that uncle. And he went on to describe about how that he had called him in several times and, and picked out what songs he wanted to sing at the funeral and, and different things and how they wanted to lay it out. And I realized they told me minutes after I left there. And I realized I never heard him say anything along that line. He was polite and nodded like he agreed, but what he said was, get the songs ready. Are y'all listening? I didn't know that. And there's cases of people, even people you love, you don't know what they're saying. And what to, even though you might know them pretty good, you don't know their heart. And if somebody didn't believe, don't knock it, don't judge, unless you've been where they are. You may think you know what you do, but you can get tired. You can get weary, and heaven gets to looking real good. That's true. Right? But don't say faith doesn't work. Because that wasn't faith. One of them said, I'm not going to die, I'm going to live. The other one said, get the songs ready. Both of them got what they said. Can you see this? Both of them got exactly what they said. Where are you? Hebrews 3, can you take a little more? 3 verse 1. It says, therefore... Holy brethren, Hebrews 3, 1, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. Now, other, the New King James and other translations say confession. The apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. Others just say the high priest of our faith. Being the high priest of our faith is, tie, is inseparable from being the high priest of our confession, of what we say. Jesus works with what we say. That's right. That's right. Not just my idea. He is the apostle and high priest of what? Of, of our confession. Of what we say. Now that sounds strange to some people. But the same people believe it exactly in the new birth. How do you get born again? Come on help me out. How do you get born again? Romans 10. 9 and 10. Put it on the screen for us please. Romans 10. 9 and 10. If you will do what? That's what it starts with. It's what it begins with. How do you get born again? If you'll confess with your mouth, how much plainer can you get? Mouth is moving. Sound is coming out. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Verse 10, why? For with the heart Man believes unto righteousness. That's not the end. That's half the verse. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. It's the way you get born again. It's the way everything else happens. It's the way God created the universe. It's the way the just live by faith. It's the way the just walk by faith. No, it's not just parroting anything that crosses your mind. It's not just saying any and everything because if you don't believe it, it's not going to happen. But if you believe it and you say it and you expect it and you won't quit, your high priest works with it. 
has a right to enforce it, has a right to empower it and enable it beyond what you could do. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. See, that's why I wanted you to say earlier, extras coming in. Extras coming in, and we're paying everything off quickly. <laughs> oh, look out, look out. I feel faith in the room. I feel faith. Look out. Kim, watch out. There's going to be a lot of testimonies. There's going to be a pile of testimonies. Woo! Now, can you tell when you're saying something like that if you believe it or if you don't? Sure you can. And one of the biggest ways you can tell is if you really believe it, you're expecting it. And if you're expecting it, you get excited. Is that right? It's not just parroting something. There's a genuine quickening and excitement down in you. That's why I felt it when you said it just then. Amen. You said extra, extra is coming in. Coming in. And you're paying everything off yeah. quickly. <laughs> Jesus, the head of the church, is the high priest of that. Amen. Of that. Your confession. Isaiah 57, 19, for confirmation. <laughs> Isaiah 57, 19, the Lord said, I create the fruit of the lips. <laughs> Creative power is released. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I've seen deaf ears open. I've seen broken bones instantly put back together. Yes. Amen. Not, not hearsay. Yes. Yes. Laid hands one time on a guy. He had broken his foot, his ankle. He had a hard cast on. He's a surgeon. Hmm. So he knows a broken bone when he sees one. <laughs> he was there to get delivered from drug addiction. Oh. And uh, uh, you know, late hours and all that kind of stuff and easy access to medications, he had gotten addicted. And that was really his biggest problem. But he had some kind of mishap, broke his foot, bone, multiple bones in his foot. And uh, we preached that afternoon on Jesus is the true cure-all. <laughs> He's good for whatever ails you. <laughs> and the Lord was with us strong. He's the true cure-all. And we had a leg on his hands and he came up. We laid hands on him. I could tell, I could tell the anointing was there. He said later, it felt like a band that was on him just broke off. It was that addiction. He told me months later, he was back into his practice and was doing mission work. He was going on mission trips. No drugs. No, no drugs. No craving for him. But that wasn't all that happened. He looked at me. I looked at him. The anointing was on him. And now I didn't tell him to do this. He looked down. He said, well, he'll heal this too, won't he? I said, yes. He, he, he reached down and, and tore off that, that cast. I didn't tell him to do it. And, he, he, and then he looked at me and he jumped up in the air. <laughs> jumped up and landed on it. From the natural you wanted to cringe. Instantly, his foot was perfect. Instantly. He's a doctor, he would know. He's a surgeon. There was an 80 something year old woman that was in the service one day and we, we came down through there and, and uh, asked her what, her what her issue was. She's had a rotor uh, cuff 
Is that what they call it in your shoulder? Yes. Rotator cuff, whatever. Uh, and she said, I, I, can't, I can't lift my, my arm. It, it had been damaged and hurt and <coughs> scar tissue and all kind of stuff. And, and, uh, and the Lord prompted me to, to, to speak to it. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory. And, and took her arm and, and just lit. Man, all at once she threw up both hands in there just like that. I mean vertical. Began to cry since she hadn't done that in years. I'm not talking about hearsay. I'm talking about what I saw with my own eyes. And many such things. How many believe God still does these kind of things today? Is he still God? Did he lose his power? Did his will change? But he works with what we say. He creates the fruit of the lips. What are you saying? What are you saying? Hallelujah. I think we need to spend some more time on it. What do you think you come back next Sunday and we'll just yes, sir. Yes, pick sir. up on this? And I don't yes. think we get through with this today. We'll see. We'll see. But go to Mark 5 in closing, I think. Mark 5. Jesus said, if you'll say and not doubt, but believe that what you say will come to pass, Jesus said. How many got respect for what Jesus says? The head of the church said, you will have what you say. And Hebrews said, he is the apostle and high priest of what we say. That's right. Amen. Our confession. Right. Isaiah said, he, create, he said, I create the fruit of the lips. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Well, the enemy wants you to say things he can work with. Yes. Right. Like I can't. Not going to make it. I'm going to. Did you see what he put in the people's mouth when they, when God's people got to the promised land? They sent in the spies. What did they keep saying? We're all going to die. We can't do it. We're all going to die. And you'll notice death is just all through this world system. Death is a part of people's vocabulary. Death, 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 and failure. And people laugh and they think it's funny. It's not funny. Right. Death in your mouth means death in your life. Yeah. Right. That's right. So Amen. That's right. That's why all the popular and supposedly cool lingo is going to be negative, it's going to be dark, it's going to be death. It's not funny. No. It's not harmless. No. Let the Word of God be in your mouth. Amen. Let life be in your mouth. Amen. Let healing be in your mouth. Yes. Let victory be in your mouth. Yes. Never say, I guess I'm coming down with. No. No. I guess I'm coming down with. Why not just say, I guess I'm taking a healing. <laughs> don't, I don't believe I'll be able to make it. Why, just as easy to say, I believe I'll be able to make it. Amen. I can't do it. The Bible said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, a lot of people have heard some of this, but it's amazing what people say in their private life. Now, I've made mistakes too, but you just look at people sometimes in amazement and go, how long have you been going to Faith Life Church? <laughs> and you still talk like that? Oh, 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 I didn't mean, yeah, you did. It came out of you. Your heart, your mouth will tell off on your heart. It'll reveal what you really believe. Especially under pressure. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Especially yeah. in times of duress and pressure. Yeah. Right. It's like anything. You squeeze it, you see what comes out. A lot of people, you squeeze them, cussing comes out. Yeah. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Not good. Not good. Yeah. Hate, mm -hmm. yeah. anger, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Depression. Yeah. Oh, friend, be full of something good. So that if you get squeezed, 
Not cussing don't come out. Blessing comes out. The more you get squeezed, the more you shout hallelujah. Right? The more you get squeezed, the more you talk victory. Talk to her. Something's not working right. You talk to her. Say, I call you strong. That's right. yes. Kidneys, listen to me. That's right. Work right. That's right. Lungs, clear up. Yes. Right? Yes, right? Head, be healed. Yes. Ears, open up. Yes. I had a guy come to healing school one time. And, and uh, so I said, so what, what's the issue? He said, my tear ducts don't work right. The he said, I, I've been to doctor after doctor and my eyes are so dry and, and they use these drops, but they don't last long and it's because my tear ducts don't work. And, and we tried this, but they still don't work. And, and we've done everything, but they don't work. My tear ducts don't work. He must have said it 20 times. My tear ducts don't work. Wow. <laughs> and he looked at me and said, so we want to pray? I said, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We're not ready to pray. There's a lot of wasted motion in prayer. I said, so your tear ducts don't work. He said, no, they don't work. You could tell he had said it so many times. I said, uh, as a, if you decree a thing, that's how it'll be to you. You're decreeing that your tear ducts don't work right. He said, well, they don't. <laughs> they don't laugh. You were at the same place. Maybe there today, but you were at the same place. Now, he said, but they don't. I said, yeah, yeah, I understand. But faith calls those things that be not as though they were. Let the weak say, not I'm weak. You already got that. What did Brother Hagin say? If you're not satisfied with what you have, quit saying what you're saying. He said, well, they don't work. I said, if you say so. He looked at me baffled. He said, what do you mean? I said, if you say, so, if you say they don't work. He said, well, they don't. <laughs> And we were round and around a little bit. Thank God eventually Amen. he saw it. Amen. And he began to say, I call my tear ducts normal. Amen. Tear ducts? Mm-hmm. Talk, Jesus talked to fever. Why couldn't you talk to your tear ducts? Yeah. Tear ducts? Yeah. Listen to me. Yeah. Work right. Yeah. Function normally. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. And Jesus creates the fruit of the lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the apostle and the high priest of what you say from the heart that you believe. Not everything you say, but what you say from your heart that you believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you can believe everything he said in his word. Mark 5 describes the woman with the issue of blood. Twelve years suffered many things of many physicians. It was nothing better, but rather grew worse. And she came behind in the throng and in the press, and she touched Jesus' garment. Verse 28. For what? She said. For she said. She did what? She did what? She did what? She said, I sure hope something happens here because I've suffered a long time. And if it's the will of God, no. Men think that's what you're supposed to do, but that's not the Bible. That's not the Gospels. She said, if I may touch But his clothes, I shall be whole. That's no ifs. That's no maybes. Somebody say, I shall be. She's saying, when I touch, something's going to happen. 
Right? When I touch, something's going to happen. When I touch, something's going to happen. When I touch, extra's coming in. (laughs) And when I touch, I shall be whole. Verse 29. And straightway, immediately, the fountain, her, her, her hemorrhage was dried up and she felt in her body she was healed of that plague. Now, when did she feel it? Before she said it or after she said it? After, after she said it. You don't wait till you feel it. No. Then you're going to say it. No. no faith involved there. No. You say it before you see it. Right. Before you feel it. Verse 30, Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue or power had gone out of him, he turned uh, about in the press. He said, two touched my clothes. Hallelujah. Now, verse 31, his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and says, who touched me? So people were touching him all around. If it was just based on Jesus' faith, they'd have all been healed. If it was just based on the power that was on him, they'd have all been healed. What was the difference? I believed, therefore I said. They weren't saying because they weren't believing. And there was no action to the power. Who touched me? Verse 32. He looked around to see her that had done this thing. Keep going. The woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, God in his sovereignty has seen fit to heal you. I chose to heal you today. My faith has made you. No, 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 no. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. Did did this woman have real faith? No question about it. Real faith gets real results. How do we know she had real faith? You could see her faith. She left the house in her weakened condition. She pushed through that crowd and she touched the the edge of his clothes. You could see it. What else? You could hear it. I said you could hear it. She said when I touch Something's going to happen. When I touched, not I might be, we'll see, we hope so, I shall be whole. Would it be okay to follow the Bible example? Would it be okay to do what Scripture shows has been successful? Glory to God. Then let's get rid of men's tradition. Let's get rid of foolish stuff. And let's get back to the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And have some real faith that says. Praise God. Stand on your feet, everybody. Oh, hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lift up your your hearts and your voices and your hands to the Lord. Let's give him thanks for his word. We prayed and asked him to speak, asked him to speak to us. I believe he did. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your voices. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us. <clears throat> thank you. Faith comes by hearing. And faith is fed by hearing. And faith continues to come by hearing. Thank you that that is what has happened. And that is what is happening in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I mean, just close your eyes. Don't, don't look around. Show reverence and respect. Not for me, for, for the Lord, for His Holy Spirit. We, we, there's some things we need to act on right now while faith is strong and while you're in corporate faith. <clears throat> Lay your hands. Everybody do it now. Don't, you don't want to miss out on this. Lay your hands on your head. Say it out loud. Head, head. I call you healed. Brain, Brain. be normal normal. and be perfect and and function perfectly. perfectly. Be right right. 
in the name of Jesus. Eyes, be strong. Ears, be clear. Nose, breathing. Lungs, be clear. Be clean. Be healed in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Put your hands on your throat and are your neck. Say it out loud. Throat, be made right. Be restored. Be healthy. Be healed. Neck, vertebra, skull, be right. Be healed. Spine, spinal cord, nerves. Discs, be healed, be restored in the name of Jesus. Discs are being restored. Oh, somebody say, I believe I receive it. I believe I receive it. Put your hands on your back. Say, back, be right. Back, be healed in Jesus' name. Put your hand on your hips. Say hips, hips. Be, right. be right, be normal, be, normal. be, strong. be strong, be healed, be healed. Knees. knees, be healed, be healed. Ankles. ankles, be healed, be healed. Feet. feet, toes, toes. Be, restored. be restored, be made right, be, made right. be, healed. be healed, all my bones, all my bones. and all their marrow. And all my joints, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Be restored. Be healthy. Be right. Be sound in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Believe you receive. Jesus works with what you say, He creates the fruit of lips. He's the apostle and high priest of your confession. Oh, thank you, Lord. Put your hands on your midsection, your, your chest and your stomach. Sit out loud. Lungs, Lungs. be right. Be right. Heart. Heart, be cleansed. Be, cleansed. be, clear. be clear and be healed and be strong. Yea, be strong, Yay, be strong. Yay, be strong. and function normally. Valves, be repaired, be restored, hallelujah. Chambers, be right, be corrected, and function normally in Jesus' name. Blood, red cells, white cells, all cells, be right, be corrected. Be perfected, be, perfected. Be, normal. be normal, function healthily, function healthily. and normally. normally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say it out loud. Stomach, Stomach. Intestines. intestines, be healed. Be healed. Colon, Colon. Be, healed. be healed, be restored. Be restored. Anything there? that ought not be there, we curse it, command it to die, dry up, wither away, be healed, be healed. All my organs, all my glands, be healthy, function normally, be strong, be right in Jesus' name. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, yes, yes. Sit out loud. Put your hands anywhere. Say, muscles. Muscles. Function normally. Function normally. Be right. Be right. Skin. Skin. Be clear. Be clear. Be healthy. Be healthy. Be normal. Be normal. And be sound, be sound. in the name of Jesus from the top of my head 
to the soles of my feet and everything in between be quickened by the Holy Spirit. Be empowered. Be enabled. Be strengthened and become sound and healthy and work right and function normally in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey. Things are happening all over the building. All over Sarasota. All over the internet. Hallelujah. Now decree it. Said out loud, this body. This body. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. Will serve me well. All the days of my life. life. As long as I need it. It It will serve me well. well. Hallelujah. 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 And just in case you forgot, extras coming in. (laughs) Extras coming in. And we're paying everything off quickly. Hallelujah, Brother Dave.